Hello and welcome back to Assetto Corsa. In this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the Audi Sport TT Cup car. But not only am I going to be doing that, I am going to be taking it out in a race at the Nürburgring. As you can see, I am lined up 7th on the grid. Let's just get that overlay board in a better way, that leaderboard. So you can see now it's uh, in more of a Formula 1 style, how I sort of prefer down the side. It's a lot easier to see as well. And you can see I've not had a brilliant start off the line. I'm going to have head tracking on for the first for the first couple of corners. Then I realized that it's probably a bad idea to have it on whilst uh, racing a car for the first time against other opponents. So we'll be having a look at the AI in this as I did not tap him, but someone then did tap me. So anyway. Uh, first things first, we'll go through the specs and everything of the car, then I'm going to spend the rest of the video talking about the AI who I have had a bit of a tap with again. Right, the Audi TT Cup car is a car that is made for a one make racing series, I believe it replaced the uh, Volkswagen Scirocco racing series that used to be um, based in Germany and it it was basically a way for younger drivers or newer drivers or drivers that just wanted to um, enter the world of motorsport particularly with Audi you know as their GT drivers or for example maybe going towards their Limon drivers or things like that it was a way for them to prove their credentials uh, by a way of application filtering and then racing once they proved their credentials they could move on through the racing world um, it is a sports series for DTM, so you will see these races, if you watch DTM, you will possibly see these races before DTM, and I think it's been going on since 2015, so that's not, that's not too long actually, these are fairly new cars, like I said, it replaced that Volkswagen racing series, I think it was a, it can't have been a Golf racing series, Golf R, I think it was a Scirocco R, because I remember seeing those cars, I do remember seeing those cars, and they were quite a, uh, they were quite nice looking cars anyway, but this is the Audi TT Cup car. Um, speaking or taking a quote directly from Audi, uh, Professor Dr. Ulrich Hackenberg, which is uh, Audi's board, board of Management for Technical Development, said, The Audi TT is an icon and continues to epitomize powerful sportiness and emotional design in what is now its third generation. For me it was clear that a driving machine like the new Audi TT belongs on the racetrack as well. With the Audi Sport TT Cup we have found an exciting approach. The TT is going to fill, f fill? thrill fans and drivers. So there we go. Uh, straight on to the specifications, that's just a bit about the car. Straight on to the specifications, like I said, this is a four-wheel drive front-engined car. So it's got a straight four engine, TFSI, as you would expect in most Audis now. You get the TFSI engine. That's a turbo fuel stratified injection, if I remember that correctly. Uh, it is a front-engine car, as you would expect. Um, you know, the actual Audi TT is exactly the same. It's a very... It's a very light car, it only weighs uh, 1,125 kilos, so they have managed to get a lot of weight saving on this car. It's, it's incredibly light. As you can see, I am actually trying to battle some of the AI here. Uh, I think I'm alongside one of them. Let's see if I can get past him. I'm still alongside him, and... No, I cannot get past him. I'm going to have to wait for a little while. Right, um, it's a 2 litre engine. That 4, four cylinder straight 4 is 2 litres and it does produce 306 bhp, or that's 310 horsepower, 228 kilowatts at 5,500 rpm and 380 newton metres or 280 foot pounds of torque between 1,800 and 5,700 rpm. So you've got a nice red line there or a flat line there, sorry. The red line of this car is at 6,800 RPM, so it doesn't really rev as high as you would as high as you would actually think. It's not that high revving. I, I was expecting, you know, maybe 8,000 RPM or something on this car, but you know, it's 6,800. I suppose it's not far, 7,000, 1,000 RPM off. Uh, but there we go. That's some information about the specifications of the car. Uh, top speed of the car, I actually don't know because I didn't actually manage to get it up to top speed. I mean, you can see here I'm doing, what, uh, 125 miles an hour? About there. So I'm, and I'm still accelerating. So I'm going to think, I'm thinking uh, the top speed of this car is probably around the 150 mile an hour range. 
uh, 150 155 mile per hour range but there we go that is all the specifications i believe i need to mention for the car on to what the car is like in the set of course so we're talking modeling um texturing sounds and physics so starting with the modeling again we don't really have to say anything about the modeling it's an assetto corsa car it's a kunos official car they always seem to get the modeling spot on i really like the way they've got the daytime running lights on there it looks fantastic um, the normal lights work fine all the detail on the inside and outside of the car is present it's very easy to see it's an audi tt it's very easy to see it's a race version and comparing it to the actual car it doesn't look any different whatsoever from the actual car inside as well very nicely modeled you can see the vents have modeled the steering wheels been modeled nicely um it looks like a race car it looks like an entry level race car as you would expect and I think they've done a really, really good job on the modeling as always. Texturing, well, we'll start with the brake glow on that because you did see the brakes glowing just there in the replay box. If you didn't, go back a few seconds, you'll see the brakes glowing. The front brakes glow quite nicely and I got to see the rear brakes glowing as well. And they glow at a different rate to the front brakes, so it shows which brakes are having more, um, you know, more braking energy given to them and where the brake bias is actually so it's quite a forward brake bias the front brakes are a lot more heftier than the rear brakes and they're taking most of that kinetic energy and turning it into heat and of course light as you, as you get in there but you know turning into heat and noise and brake squirrel and all that kind of stuff very very nice texturing seems to be pretty good on this car um you know i i was complaining on the mclaren p1 gtr that the texturing was a bit off it wasn't it didn't look brilliant on this one i think it looks marginally better more like what i would expect yes it's still not the greatest of resolutions but i think it's a lot better and it's more like what i would expect from kunos to on one of these cars yes it's not 4k but i'm sure 4k resolution textures will be available on race department most likely um, there are something like 24 liveries available i think 22 cars actually race on here uh, or in the in the actual race I think it's 22 cars but I think there are 24 liveries available as you can see in this I've only got 16 cars racing the other four the other six just went for a bit of a they, they couldn't be bothered to race at their at the home Grand Prix for Audi they just didn't want to race you know whatever normal um, am I going to make that move I'm going to attempt it uh, still not happening still not happening and I'm sure you guys are probably looking at this and either thinking wow I'm a really really bad driver or wow this AI is uh, very different. I'll get onto that in a bit. Had a look at texturing. Time for sounds. I've compared this to the real car. Um, sounds pretty good. You know, internal, external sounds pretty good. I think the dump valve noise, as you guys can probably hear from the outside. Hold on. There you go. You, you just had five or six cars do that. I think that's just a little bit loud as I have managed to pull off a... What I'm going to say was a pretty good move on that yellow Audi. Um, but you can hear that noise, that dump valve noise. I think that's just a little bit, maybe just a little bit too loud. But the exhaust note seems pretty good. The engine noise seems pretty good. Inside, outside, all, all in all, pretty nicely done. I'm very happy with the sounds on this car as opposed to some of the other cars where I have said the sounds have been a little bit off. On this car, I think they're, they're about 90% 90, 90 there. I think they are 90% there. The best that Kunos can do at the moment with the sound quality and the sound engine and whatever they are running at the moment, I think this is the best that they can do. So, good stuff on the sounds, good stuff on the model, good stuff on the texturing. Time to go on to what is generally the most important, which is physics. What is this car like to drive? Well, it's an all-wheel drive, so that means that you do get power understeer. You, you do really get power understeer. But if you're heavy on the brakes, like I am here, and you can throw it into the corner, and you can see that it's very, very planted. In fact, I've managed to get a huge run on this Audi, this number three Audi, that I'm now going to attempt to overtake. You can see how close I am getting to this Audi. He is going to pull away on this. I don't think I was geared brilliantly because I should have been closing there. But there we go. You know, what, what can you do? Um, it's the physics of this car. Yes, you do have that understeer at low, uh, at uh, on power, sorry, on the throttle. You do have that understeer. So you want to be careful when you go into corners. But 
When you brake hard, you can get this car turned in. Just use the brakes to your advantage, I feel. Um, you know, get get on those brakes hard. Try and get the back of the car just a little bit loose so that you can get a little bit more bite on the front end when you're turning in. And it does give you a really, really nice feeling as I have managed to swoop around the outside of that number three Audi. And I think I'm going to hold it in this place as best as I can. Yes, I have lost a couple of places from the start. I started in seventh, but I really did not have a good first lap. Trying to get used to this car, I did lose quite a few places. So I've just uh, had to work my way back up. And I think this is actually where I'm going to end up at the end of this seven lap race. So what was I talking about? Yeah, the physics. Uh, uh, tires feel quite good. They're, they're pretty, pretty nice tires. Uh, it does have a tendency to have a little bit of slide but as you can see look in these high speed corners you can just see that slight amount of understeer that we're getting on power if i was to let off the accelerator right there i think i would probably scrub too much speed for it to be worth it but if i was to let off the accelerator you would see the car suddenly start to turn in a lot more sharper than it it was there and it does through the rest of this race so that's the only thing that i really think you have to be aware about it's not the most agile of cars in just general turning i mean I've, I've i've felt cars that are a lot more agile that you can take into corners a lot faster but that being said it is an audi tt it's an entry level cup car and it does feel pretty good i did like this race and that's probably in part due to the ai so i'll rate this car then I'll move on to the AI. I'm going to say for this car, I'm going to give it a... I've got to give it a 9.5 out of 10. It really, really is a nice car. I, I can't give it a 10 because it's not that super spectacular, amazing, best car of the pack style car. You know, I, I just can't give it a 10 for that. But it is a really, really nice car to drive. And I'm thoroughly impressed with it. I, I think it's I think it's really nice and it's well worth driving. Plus, of course, with this AI and so many different liveries, you can have a really decent competition. So yeah, nine and a half out of ten. Well done, Kunos, and thoroughly thoroughly recommend people driving this car. One thing I did mention, uh, forget to mention, is the push to pass feature that it has. So you can see on the HUD right at the bottom we've got uh, my fuel level and then you just saw on the left on the right hand side right at the bottom something's gone blue that is my push to pass active it's going to turn red when it's running out there it goes and then it'll turn white when i've actually run out and that number will go down i started with 13 so i have been using them i didn't use them for the first couple of laps because i completely forgot about it so that's a that's a feature that you've also got in the physics which actually adds an additional 30 bhp i think 29 or 30 bhp so i'll bring up the total to about 336 brake horsepower 340 hp so that's not bad that's not bad at all and it does come in handy with this new ai and this new ai is absolutely spectacular it feels like we're driving against actual people and you can actually see if you look on that leaderboard and if you've been watching that leaderboard through the race leaders on the final lap you can see that there are different drivers setting purple sectors or purple splits at different times different drivers are doing better at certain times you know even myself I'm setting some purple there you go you can see that I set a purple right there uh, but some of mine are gray so they're not better some of them are green so they're better than they're my personal best the drivers behind me you can see one's not doing so well the other one's had an entire lap of almost green so on and so forth so they've got that speed they're constantly improving that's really cool the other thing that is really really cool is the way that they drive and defend they've got way more variation than they had at any other point before that i've seen in the ai in fact they've got more variation than a lot of ai i've seen in other titles so in other titles i probably haven't seen ai as varied as this are they the best ai i've ever driven against i don't know i don't know that's kind of subjective do they feel fairly realistic that i'm going to say yes they defend they attack they block they try to go to the left they try to go to the right um they they are genuinely good 
And look at that. I mean, if you're looking at that, they're not all following the same line anymore. They're darting in and out, taking different lines, trying to work out what's fastest for that particular AI car. How does that actually pan out in the end? It means that the AI is a lot harder, but they're also prone to making more mistakes. On a practice run at Mugello, I actually, um, after this, I managed to see cars going off at the last corner into the dirt beaching themselves and we actually had yellow flags as I am now trying to push everything I can out of this car and it is getting a little bit scruffy um, so are these AI really really good it, has this new algorithm worked has this new variation worked yes it has it really has brought a whole new dimension to the racing in a set of course you can actually enjoy offline races now with an absolute incredible incredible ai system and i i do hope that it gets even better than this i'm sure there are ways for it to get even better that brings me to the end of the race um as you can see how scruffy i am there just trying to catch up i'm going to finish going into the last corner almost on the dirt that's how much i was trying to push on this car just trying to catch up to those guys ahead and in fact you saw another car go into the dirt and then just peel off and they haven't just finished in a straight line so there we go I finished in ninth place I'm just going to go once those those final laps come up I just want you to see the final lap here yeah, you can see the pit lane pit lane limiter flashing there or the pit lane light right if you look at my lap my fastest lap you will see if I just go to timetable currently this is lap chart come on come on me in the past there we go right if you look at my lap time compared to the other lap times, I could probably have come in fourth place right there. But, you know, that's how cool this is. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos on Assetto Corsa. Leave a comment in the comments box below. Let me know what you think of the AI and of this car. And don't forget to support my Patreon scheme. Link to that is in the description box below. I will see you guys next time.